Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with the Dicey Review, and tonight we're going to be learning how to play the one to five player game, the Artemis Odyssey from Grand Gamers Guild, coming to Kickstarter in early September. Now, I do want to quickly mention that since I'm using a prototype version of the game, the component quality will be much higher in the final release, and I'm going to post an image of what the final components will look like during our component overview. But let's get to the table. The Artemis Odyssey comes with all of the components that you see here, including one planning board, 13 singularity cards, 17 alien artifact cards, one singularity token, a first player marker, 150 different resource cards in one of six different categories, five mission cards for solo play, 42 planet tokens, nine star tokens, and player components in the five different player colors. In the final retail version and in the Kickstarter version, the player components will look vastly different than in this prototype. In the prototype version, these different components have these different titles. But in the final retail version and in the Kickstarter version, each of these components will look similar to this. In the game, these three resources are referred to as ores. There are also six different types of production planets and an alien planet type. To begin setup, each player chooses a player color and then takes all of the components of that color. Then, depending on the player count, remove a number of alien planets from the game. In a three-player example, like we're looking at today, we'll remove two alien planets and put them back in the box. Then place all of the stars face up on the table. Their position and how far they are from each other doesn't necessarily matter. Just make sure that there's enough space around each star for some planets. All of the stars will have different astrological symbols with the exception of the sun. Shuffle one each of the basic six planets, excluding the alien planets, and then place each one of them face down around the sun. This is the starting system. It's important to note that each star with a planet surrounding it is called a system. Each player will then randomly choose a planet around the sun and reveal it, and place one of their factories and one of their starships on it. The planets that aren't chosen will be returned to the planet supply. Then shuffle all of the remaining planets and place them randomly face down around all of the stars. Each system has to have at least three to seven planets around it, but other than that, there aren't any restrictions. Then sort the resource cards by type and place them face up in separate decks. This group of decks is called the bank. Shuffle all of the alien artifact cards and place them nearby in a face down supply. And then each player will draw one of each of the resources into their hand as their starting hand. Then place the planning board within easy reach of all players, randomly determine a first player and give them the first player marker, and then each player will place their score marker on the seven space of the score track. After this has been done, you're ready to play. In the Artemis Odyssey, your goal is to be the most successful explorer in the galaxy, and you do this by exploring new planets and expanding your productive presence on those planets. In the game, players will place hidden actions on a shared planning board, and once this board is full of actions, those actions will be revealed and played in sequence from start to finish. All players can benefit from each action, so timing is crucial, and predicting what your opponents are trying to do can help you to achieve the most efficient turns. The first player to reach 77 victory points or reveal all of the planets will trigger the end of the game, and the player with the most victory points will win. The Artemis Odyssey is played in rounds, and in each round of the game there are two phases. At the end of each round there is some cleanup, and then unless the end game conditions have been met, a new round will begin. The first phase of each round is the planning phase, and during the planning phase, each player beginning with the start player and then in clockwise order will take a turn placing one of their action cards face down on any open space of the planning board that they want to. 
The slots at the board can be filled in any order, but once the board is full, the actions will be resolved in sequence, starting from one and then increasing. So it's important to make sure that you place actions on the board to resolve at the right time for what you're planning to do. And after the planning board has been filled, the players will resolve all actions during the action phase. In the action phase, begin by turning over the leftmost card on the planning board and then resolving that action fully before moving on to the next action. Each action can be resolved by every player. And the player who played the action card, though, is known as the planner, and they'll receive an extra benefit, which I'll detail in a moment for each action. After each player that wants to use the action has used it, the next action card will be revealed and resolved in the same way. And after the last action card on the planning board has been revealed and resolved, the action phase is over. Now that we've looked at a general overview of the phases, let's take a look at what each of the action cards do in detail. When taking the produce action, the planner will choose one of the two resource types depicted on the top of the card. Let's say the planner chose water. After the planner has determined which type of planet will produce, each player will gain resources based on the type of planet and the assets that they have there. Any planet with a starship or a colony will produce one resource of the planet's type. Any planet with a factory would produce two resources of the planet's type. So in this instance, the yellow player would get three water, the green player would get two water, but the red player would only get two water. This is because only factories, starships, and colonies produce. Terraformers will never produce on any type of planet. It's also important to note that any type of structure on an alien planet will never produce any resources. And if the type of resource being produced were to run out during the action, the planner would decide in which order players will receive cards until the bank is empty. When resolving a travel action, the planner is able to move one of their starships from anywhere in the play area onto a planet in one of the three systems shown on the top of the card. So for instance, the yellow player could move one of their starships into one of these three systems. So let's say that the yellow player decides to move into this system. When moving into a system, a player is allowed to peek at all of the undiscovered planets before deciding which planet they would like to move to. After peeking at the undiscovered planets, the player will decide whether to go to an already discovered planet or an undiscovered planet. When you discover one of the production planets, you immediately gain one of the resource cards from the bank showing. After the planner has decided which system they want to move into, all of the other players can also move one of their starships into the same system that the planner chose if they want to. So for instance, the green player could move their marker to this planet, and the red player could move a starship to this planet, and the red player could move their starship to this planet. It's important to note that if you move to an already discovered planet, you don't gain one of the depicted resources when moving on to that planet. And a player can only move to a system if it has an available planet. A planet is only available if it's face down, or if it's face up but it has no assets belonging to any player, or if it's discovered and it has one or more of your own assets. So for instance, in this system, the green player could move their starship here because they already have assets on this planet. And you can always choose to not travel even if there are available planets. But if you choose to peek, that's part of traveling. So if you peek at a planet, you're committed to traveling to that system. If a player discovers an alien planet, they would immediately draw alien artifact cards equal to all of the alien planets where they have assets. So for instance, if the green player discovered this alien planet, they would get to draw two alien artifact cards because they have two alien planets where they have presence. The player would get to select one of the alien artifact cards that they've drawn, and then they would discard the rest to the bottom of the deck. When resolving the trade action, all players have to display their resource cards in front of them face up. The planner, in this example the red player, is able to propose a trade with any other player. And trades can involve any number of resources, there's no limitations there, and if both of the players agree, the trade is immediately carried out. So for instance, the red player could offer this water to the yellow player in exchange for one of these resources. And the planner can also trade with the bank if they want to. 
The first trade that the planner makes with the bank would only cost one card. So in this example, the red player could trade this food for this type of ore. If the planner wanted to make a second trade, they would have to spend two identical cards. A third trade would cost three identical cards, and so on. It's important to note that the other players can't trade between themselves or with the bank. And when the planner says that they're done trading, all players will take their resource cards back into their hand. When a player resolves a build action, the planner can first build, at most, two assets if they want to. These two assets can be the same or they can be different. Then, each other player is able to build, at most, one asset. Each type of asset has a different resource cost, and to build an asset, a player has to return the correct resources to the bank. And each different asset has rules about how it can be built. A colony can only be built on a planet where a player either has a terraformer or a starship. And to build a colony, it would cost one water, one food, and then one ore of any type. And it's important to note that if you build a colony on an alien planet, you would immediately score three victory points. You can only build a factory on a planet where you currently have a colony. And to build a factory, it would cost two energy and one ore of any type. And once again, if you build a factory on an alien planet, you would immediately score three victory points. A player can build a starship on any planet where they currently have one asset of any type. To build a starship, it would cost one energy and one ore of each type. And lastly, you can only build a terraformer on a water, food, or alien planet. And you have to have at least one colony, factory, or starship on the planet. You would place the terraformer on the planet from your supply and immediately gain three victory points. And it costs two water and two food to build a terraformer. And then finally, there are multiple score actions that can be resolved in each player deck. The planner will immediately take the first player marker, and then they'll choose one of the scoring options displayed on the card. So for instance, they could choose this option or this option, this option or that option. They would choose one or the other, not both. The option that the planner chooses is what all players will score. And the player or players who scored the most victory points in the resolution of this card will gain a three victory point bonus in addition to whatever they scored from the card. And in a similar way, the player or the players who scored the fewest victory points will lose two victory points in addition to any victory points they gained. Each of the cards will score slightly differently. If the player chooses this option, the players would score one victory point for each colony they have in play and two victory points for each factory they have in play. If they choose this option, they would score two victory points for each starship they have in play. If the player chooses this option, each player can discard two or more matching resources from their hand to the bank, scoring one victory point for each discarded card. They can do this for up to a maximum of nine victory points. And for this process, the planner determines the order in which all players score. If the player chooses this option, each player can discard two or more different resources from their hand back to the bank, scoring two victory points for each discarded card. It's important to note that in the prototype copy, this value is printed incorrectly. If the player chooses this option, they would score two victory points for every alien planet where they have one asset. This would allow them to score three victory points for each terraformer they have. And then finally, this card would allow players to score two victory points for each asset they have in the system where they have the most assets. Once again, the value printed on this prototype card is incorrect. And finally, this option would allow players to score one victory point for each system where they have at least one asset. At the end of each round, players will perform the following steps. First, each player will check their hand of cards, and if they have more than 10 resource cards, they have to discard down to 10 by discarding cards to the bank. Then, make sure that the right player has the first player marker. The first player should be the one who played a scorecard on the rightmost space of the planning board this round. If no scorecards are on the board, the first player marker doesn't move. Then, each player places any of their played scorecards in a scorecard discard pile next to the planning board. Each player should make their own scoring card discard pile separate from the other players. Then, take any of your remaining revealed action cards back into your hand. And finally, if your personal scorecard discard pile has all four of your scoring cards in it, you take those cards back into your hand. Then you'll start a new round unless the end game conditions have been met. 
Now, I do want to briefly mention a card in the game called Alien Artifacts. Alien Artifacts are obtained when you discover alien planets and when any player reaches 42 points for the first time. Alien Artifacts should be kept hidden from other players. Each Alien Artifact card will describe when and how it can be used. And Alien Artifacts are one-time use, so once used, they should be removed from the game. The first time any player reaches 42 points, an alien artifact discovery will take place, and this only happens once per game. What will happen is the player with the fewest victory points will draw alien artifact cards equal to the player count. This player will look at the cards and choose one, and then give the cards to the player with the next lowest victory point total. That player will choose a card, and then this continues until all players have received a card. The player who reached 42 first doesn't get to choose, but is simply given the last alien artifact card. And if any player is tied for a victory point total, the tie is broken by the player who is closest in clockwise order from the start player. They're considered to have the lowest score between the tied players. When the last planet is discovered, or a player reaches 77 points, the round is finished like normal, and then the player with the most victory points is the winner. But in the case of a tie, the victory is shared. In a two-player game, there are a few changes to setup and gameplay, which I'll go over now. During setup, remove two alien planets, like in a three-player game, and then shuffle the singularity cards and place the deck face down near the planning board. Then place the singularity token in the marked spot of the planning board as a reminder. During the planning phase in a two-player game, players can't place an action card into the slot with the singularity token. During the action phase, when the sequence of actions gets to the singularity token space, you'll reveal the top card of the singularity deck, and then both players can resolve the effect on the singularity card. And you can resolve the effect in turn order if that matters. Then, remove that singularity card from the game. Also, in a two-player game, when taking the trading action, after the planner has made any trades they want to with the bank, the other player can also trade with the bank at a higher cost. Their first trade costs two identical resources, then three, and so on. And finally, in a two-player game, when a player travels to an alien planet, even if it's already revealed, that player can peek at the top card of the Singularity deck to see what will be revealed next. All right, everybody, that was our video. Hopefully it was helpful and hopefully it was informative. If you have any questions about how to play the game, please comment below or email me directly at thedicereview at gmail.com. Make sure and connect with us on social media or by visiting our Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you at the table.